Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Sunshine Reports. I am Obi Chukwemeka Oti. A new Assistant Inspector General of Police, Ebong Eubio Ebong, has been deployed to take charge of Zone 17 covering Ondo and Ekiti State. This is contained in a statement by the Zona Police Public Relations Officer, Adeoye Akim. An indigen of Ikim Itam in Itu local government area of Akwaibom State and enlisted into the Nigeria Police Force in 1990, Ebang has served in different formations and capacities until recently as a Commissioner of Police, Airport Police Command Lagos, before he was promoted to the new rank of AIG. Mr. Ebong is the sixth AIG to oversee Zone 17, Akure. Meanwhile, as part of efforts to stem the spate of insecurity along the Undo border with Edo State, Undo State government has set up a joint military and paramilitary station in the Imoru community in Osek Council area. Special advisor to the governor on security matters said the move is to curtail activities of criminal elements, particularly kidnappers who move into the state to commit heinous crimes and hibernate outside the state. OSRC Zaid Aribisela has more. Undo State is strategically located in the southwest region of Nigeria, but the uniqueness of its location is that the state shares borders with about five other states in different regions like Kogi in north-central, Edo and Delta in south-south, Oshun and Ogun in the southwest. Nigeria's running battle with insecurity is felt across states' level, Undo State inclusive, a situation manifesting in the form of kidnappings, hand robbery, among others. This situation sometimes result to loss of lives and property. Ose local government area of Undo State is one of the locations that have witnessed varying degrees of the manifestations of insecurity as residents, farmers and commuters have at different times been on the receiving end of activities of non-state actors. As part of efforts to stem insecurity around this corridor which borders Edo State, Undo State government has moved to set up paramilitary and military station in Imuru, one of the communities in the area. Special advisor to the governor on security matters, Antetunji Adeleye, said the step is to ensure residents and commuters carry out their activities without fear. The, the state government had approved that a station be opened at Imuru to take care of the excesses of these criminals uh, who actually reside outside the state they cross water to perpetrate crime and they run back. The criminals, according to Adelaide, normally come through the rivers to perpetrate the Inos Act and run back to neighboring states. We, we had put in place what we call uh, military and paramilitary operations around the forestry areas and they have been driven away by the day. Uh, we want to we want to ask the chiefs, the Olus, to desist from giving these faceless marauders, kidnappers, plots of land. Because some of them do hide under the fact that they were being given by the local chiefs there. So the government is warning them to stop giving uh, plots of land to faceless headers that the government had put in place adequate mayor to make sure that they be registered before they can stay. So right now, we had commenced uh, paramilitary and military operations around the borders, not only Imuru border, but all borders that are considered as black spots, the Akoko axis, where we have the same type of issue with Kogi Ondo, then the Edo Undo axis. So those areas will adequately be taken care of during this holiday. Adelaide, who is also commander of the State Security Network Agency, Amotekun Corps, enjoined traditional leaders in various communities to desist from allocating lands to faceless individuals. Sahid Aribisala, OSRC News. In the meantime, the Enugu state government has vowed to shut down schools on markets, observing the illegal one-week sit-at-home order by Simon Ekpa. 
A statement by Secretary to the State Government, Professor Chidebere Onya, said that some schools and businesses in Enugu State did not open for their normal activities in apparent obedience to the seat at home declared by Finland-based Biafra agitator Simon Ekpa. Despite a statement by the leadership of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, that it didn't declare any seat at home. The state government said it is alarmed and dismayed by the development, warning that any school that fails to open and function normally from today, Tuesday, will have its license revoked immediately. The government urged residents of the state to go about their normal activities as adequate security measures have been put in place to protect lives and property, adding that it will deploy the full instrumentality of the law, such as Cybercrime Act 2015, to go after and prosecute anybody, individuals, groups and organizations intentionally encouraging the illegal seat-at-home order, instilling fear on residents, raising false alarm to disturb public peace through fake news sharing and propagation of falsehood. Away from security now, ahead of the forthcoming National Caucus and the National Executive Committee neck meetings of the All Progressives Congress APC, the party's National Working Committee, NWC, and members of the Progressive Governors Forum, PGF, are currently meeting at the APC National Secretariat in Abuja. Though the agenda was not disclosed, reports say the meetings was a move by the NWC to get the buying in of the governors on the agenda for the planned caucus and neck meeting slated for Monday and Tuesday next week. It was also gathered that the meeting is aimed at getting members of the PGF, a critical organ of the party, to endorse yet to be approved audit reports submitted to the NWC by an external audit firm engaged by Senator Abdullahi Adamu led NWC. The NWC is required by the APC constitution to present the party's audit reports to the highest decision making organ, that is the NEC, at its meeting take a look into the intra-leadership crisis within the NWC over allegations of breaches, among others. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, says that it stopped using the printout currently being paraded by Anambra candidate Mesoma Ejikeme as the authentic result in 2021. The board also reiterated its position that the UTME result paraded by Ejikeme Joy Mesoma is patently fake. In a statement by the board spokesman Fabian Benjamin, Jam insisted that only Mesoma paraded the obsolete notification slip out of all the candidates that sat the 2023 UTME examination. The board also would like to reassure Nigerians that its system was neither tempered with nor compromised as the candidate simply falsified a copy of a result slip of a candidate named Asimiu Mariam Omobolanli who sat the UTMA in 2021 and scored 138. In the meantime, Nigerians have demanded an independent forensic investigation over the trending saga between Mesoma Ejikeme and the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board JAMB. One of them, a former Minister of Education, Obi Ezekwesili, listening to Mesoma in the video where she narrated her own side of the story, shows it is reasonable to request a forensic investigation to help reveal what really transpired. In a post via her verified Twitter handle, Ezekwesili disclosed that she had reached out to the Registrar of JAM to carry out an independent investigation. Mesoma was accused by the JAM authority of forging her result, which she had denied. Mesoma, who spoke in a video expressing surprise that a result she reportedly printed out from the JAM portal could be termed fake by the examination board, lamented that she was traumatized by the claim made by JAM, describing herself as a brilliant student. Away from that, the Federal Capital Territory has announced the breakout of diphtheria in parts of the city of Abuja. The FCT Director, Public Health Department, Dr. Sadiq Abdurrahman, 
who announced the outbreak in Abuja, said the disease had already killed a four-year-old, adding that outbreaks earlier recorded in some states in January had triggered a national response by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC. Diphtheria is an infection caused by strains of a bacteria known as Corinobacterium diphtheriae, which produces toxins that cause a difficulty in breathing and heart rhythm problems and could lead to death. The director said the outbreak was confirmed after tests on samples of suspected cases in a community near Diede came back positive. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has announced plans to install charging ports across its filling stations nationwide to charge electric vehicles. This is amid the quest for a solution to the effect of fuel subsidy removal. It also said the company is currently discussing with indigenous firms to boost local production capacity of electric vehicles as part of moves to reduce carbon emissions. Now to sports, all arrangements have been concluded for the grand finale of 2023 Ondo State Universal Basic Education Bob Subeb Basic Education School Sports Competition for tomorrow, Wednesday. The event will hold at the Spartan Arena of St. Thomas Aquinas College School, Akure, where all winners that emerged from five zones, namely Akoko, Owo, Akure, Ondo and Okitupupa would compete with one another before the best athletes to represent Ondo State at the regional final in Ibadan and the national finals in Abuja later in the year are selected. According to the Director of Social Mobilization at Subeb, Mr. Julius Adebayo, the winners of a number of sporting events such as Ludo, Ayolokpon, uh, table tennis, football, as well as track and field events have already emerged, awaiting the friendly hostilities at the state level. He added that the event is sponsored by the Universal Basic Education Commission, Ubek Abuja, in partnership with the state suburbs, just as the national sports contest is taking place simultaneously across the 36 states of the Federation. Dignitaries from all walks of life, especially stakeholders in the education, youth orientation and sports development subsectors, are expected to grace the finals of a competition designed for learners in public primary schools to bring out the best in youngsters aside academic curriculum. And with that sports story, we conclude Sunshine Reports. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon.